Live updated October 15, 2020. 9 12 p.m. Eastern Time October 15, 2020. 9 12 p.m. Eastern Time Fact Checking the Trump and Biden Town Hall's Image Credit. Doug Mills, The New York Times. Emily L. Conan for The New York Times President Trump and former Vice President Joseph R. Biden Jr. were originally scheduled to face off on Thursday night in a town hall format for the second of three scheduled debates. But after Mr. Trump became ill with the coronavirus, the Presidential Debate Commission said the debate would have to be conducted virtually, leading Mr. Trump to pull out and Mr. Biden to schedule a town hall session of his own on ABC. Mr. Trump then agreed to appear at a town hall hosted by NBC at exactly the same time. Both sessions are scheduled to start at 8 p.m. Eastern. Mr. Biden's, in Philadelphia, will run for 90 minutes and is hosted by George Stephanopoulos. Mr. Biden is being questioned by voters from across the political spectrum in Pennsylvania, a critical swing state. Mr. Trump is appearing from Miami and answering questions for about an hour from an audience of approximately 60 voters from Florida, a state vital to his electoral prospects. Savannah Guthrie is the moderator. For Mr. Trump, who is trailing in the polls, it will be one of his last opportunities to speak to a national audience before Election Day on November 3. It will be his first extensive grilling outside of Fox News since his hospitalization with a virus that has now killed more than 217,000 people in the United States. For Mr. Biden, the evening will be a chance to press his argument against the president, especially Mr. Trump's handling of the pandemic and the resulting human and economic toll. A team of journalists from the New York Times will fact-check both candidates in their separate appearances, providing context and analysis. By fact-check reporter, I've done more for the African-American community than any president with the exception of Abraham Lincoln. Mr. Trump, false, not according to historians, among modern presidents. Historians agreed that the most significant legislative achievements belong to President Lyndon B. Johnson, who shepherded the passage of the Voting Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act and the Fair Housing Act, a 2017 study that assessed modern presidents based on the analysis of editorials published in black. Newspapers ranked Mr. Johnson at the top. Mr. Trump would place in the bottom third, the study's co-author told The Times. Advertisement continue reading the main story. By economics reporter, we had the greatest economy in the history of our country. Last year, Mr. Trump, false. Mr. Trump often says that his administration fostered the best economy in history before the onset of the pandemic. But data show that the economy in 2019 failed to measure up to prior economic eras across several dimensions. The expansion that stretched from 2009 through early 2020 was the longest on record, and it brought very low unemployment and improving wage gains. But many people remained on the job market sidelines. The employment rate for men in their prime, for instance, never rebounded to pre-2008 crisis levels. Output growth, which did receive a temporary boost from Mr. Trump's tax cuts has otherwise generally hovered around 2%. That is roughly the level economists see as sustainable given modern productivity and demographic trends, and lower than the run rate that prevailed in prior decades. And inequality remained very high. The top 1% held almost 40% of the nation's wealth last year. Little changed from 2016. Based on Federal Reserve data, Advertisement continue reading the main story. By health reporter, there is no plan to figure out how to distribute it. How many? We have 500,000. You know, files of it. Mr. Biden mostly true. The former vice president was referring to a monoclonal antibody cocktail developed by the pharmaceutical company Regeneron. The distribution of Regeneron's treatment which Mr. Trump received in the hospital this month and praised without evidence as cure has 
not been finalized by federal health officials. Regulators are also still examining clinical trial data to determine whether it is effective and which parts of the population might benefit the most from the treatment, which must be infused intravenously. The Department of Health and Human Services has already started to prepare the outlines of a distribution plan, which leaves much of the decision-making on who gets the treatment to states through an agreement with the federal government. Regeneron's first 300,000 doses will go to the federal stockpile, where the products will then be distributed to the states, who will decide how they should be allocated. Mr. Biden's claim that the company had 500,000 vials actually overstated it. Regeneron said it would only initially have enough doses for 50,000 patients, with a plan to have enough for about 300,000 people by the end of the year. Read more by health reporter. Just the other day they came out with a statement that 85% of the people that wear masks catch it. Mr. Trump, false. Mr. Trump appears to be referring to a SEPT-10 report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that found dining out raised the risk of infection more than other social activities. The report went viral on social media prompting the CDC to write on Twitter that the interpretation that more mask wearers are getting infected compared to non-mask wearers is incorrect. The CDC followed 314 people who had coronavirus symptoms and saw testing during the month of July. About half tested positive. The study found that in the 14 days before the onset of illness, 71% of those who tested positive and 74% of those who did not report it always using a cloth face coverings or masks when in public. By fact check reporter, I denounced white supremacy during the first debate. Mr. Trump, this is misleading. Asked during the September presidential debate to condemn white supremacist and militia groups. Mr. Trump said, sure, I'm willing, but did not outright denounce them. I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right wing, he said as Mr. Biden and the moderator, Chris Wallace, pressed for a condemnation. Mr. Trump then asked for a specific group to denounce, to which Mr. Biden responded, Proud Boys, Proud Boys stand back and stand by, he said, going on to add that somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left because this is not a right-wing problem. Read more. Advertisement. Continue reading the main story.